Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad today with our uh, Venus Orbital Station. Uh, this thing's have been a long time in the making. We made it during one of the live streams, probably a very long time ago. And uh, I've just been letting it sit here, let our relative inclination with the moon get down. Uh, apparently I forgot to turn the pumps on. Uh, so we had to wait a little bit, get things fueled up. But we're topped off, SAS is on, throttle is set to full. Uh, looks like we're ready to go, so let's get the show on the road. So, uh, ignition sequence start. It looks like a good light. There we go. Clamps off, and let's go ahead and get this bird skyward. Yeah, a little bit of a wiggle. Uh, 1.14 thrust to weight ratio coming off the pad. Uh, the station actually wasn't all that heavy. Uh, it's kind of broken down in that uh, it will have to assemble itself uh, in Venus orbit, but I, I hope we have a solid plan for all of that put together, but I, you know, hopefully we'll get to more of that you know, a little bit later. But yeah, it's uh, no difficult task for this uh, DN6B to get itself off the pad, and we should be able to uh, get ourselves to orbit with a fully fueled B upper stage ready to go, and that will hopefully complete not only our transfer to Venus, but uh, start a big part of the uh, orbital insertion there. We did not bring a heat shield. We will not be aero capturing uh, this flight. Just uh, not in the cards, really, for something as awkwardly shaped as this thing is, but uh, I guess we'll we'll get to some of that as the fairings get off, and yeah. anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and try to fly this thing to orbit, and I will pick all of you up there pick up a, a little bit of this in post, uh, as it is still kind of a slow crawl, but then things happened. Alright, we've started leaning into our gravity turn, we're getting this weird oscillation thing again. Uh, it did not do this in testing. Um, tried to get a look inside that fairing there to see if we could uh, see if it was the payload actually wiggling, and oh man. Uh oh. Yeah, it looks like the upper stage is fine, it's just our payload, which is uh, super weird. We used to only get this kind of thing with docking boards and lots of weight above them, and this uh, does definitely does not have that. Yeah, and yeah, like I said, it... Uh, come on. It did not do this at all during test flight. <laughs> this is quite concerning. Yeah, you can kind of see the gap there right below the fairings, where everything above them is just... Oh, boy. All right. Uh, well, we're actually not doing so bad. Our relative inclination, half a degree or so, but trying to keep this thing wrestled in. I think, honestly, if we can get to booster set, we'll be okay. Oh, that's too low, too low. Come on. Bring it back. Bring it back. That is one hell of a shimmy. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, all right, it's... Uh, come on, just another two minutes of this. Maybe... A uh, degree and a half. Whoa, okay, come on. No, 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 a little lower. Yeah, you can see the cargo trying to slip through the fairing there. Oh, good. No, no, oh, yeah, it's gone. We're going over. R U D. Yeah, you can see that payload just... Man, there goes most of this. What? Look at that gap. Well, that's not supposed to be that way. Well, that might be part of our problem. Well... Yeah. I'm totally not going to watch this thing hit the ground, so... We're going to skip uh, out here into the VAB and roll in our backup mission. Um, and try to figure out exactly what happened. Uh, there should be four struts here. They were not connected. We will reconnect them. Uh, I don't think that's really the crux of the issue. This is the crux of the issue. Why is our payload sitting so high above the fairing? Uh, trying to adjust it to a more reasonable place uh, makes the engine bells clip into the fairing, which 
will be absolutely disastrous if we go to try to separate said fairing. Uh, so we're going to need to redo some of this. Uh, as you can see, really the most of the weight of the station is the this orbital insertion slash maneuvering stage at the bottom. Uh, that's a lot of our weight. So we're actually going to uh, adjust this bottom tank. We're going to scale it up a little bit uh, just to give it a more solid mount point. Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, or something that will fit nicely within the uh, the fairing base itself by extending this tank out a little bit, uh, moving the engine bells up and out of the way, and hoping that uh, this kind of connection will work better. We're also going to get rid of the radiators because apparently they cause uh, a lot of lag, as we've seen every time we go to Tremonia. So we'll just replace them with an extra set of solar panels. Not the greatest thing, but I would really like to avoid part lag as we will be shipping multiple multi-part modules to this thing uh, over the course of time. I was hoping to have this be a nice reveal uh, once we got to Venus watching this thing assemble itself, but you kind of get the gist of how it's all going to go together uh, anyway. Um, trying to find other places to make improvements, but uh, we'll go ahead and get the core stage attached. It looks like uh, we have good clearances here, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to add uh, a couple of struts to the uh, crew module and the lab, and then a couple more to strut it to the uh, bearing base and the transfer stage. And just to make sure that a wrench goes out with it, or a drill, whichever, we'll go ahead and put one of those in the crates, make sure it's there. I'll find a good fairing back on, and uh, now just to Make sure the rest of the rocket seems to work. We'll go ahead and get this back into the build list and make sure that uh, this is probably going to have to go out next window, unfortunately. So there's that. But we still can get some of our uh, infrastructure uh, out to Venus this time around. So we'll carry right along with that. And we are back out on the launch pad. This is actually a resupply module. This is uh, basically the exact same resupply module that we continuously send to Harmonia Station. Uh, I mean, literally, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, ignition sequence start. A lot of bouncing here on the pad. Engine light is good. Clamps off. Oh, we caught it on the rebound spring. Yeah, uh, okay. And we're clear. And just going uh, a little northwards. No big deal. No big deal. Alright, we're going to be fine. We're going to get this into the air, we're going to get this into orbit, and we're going to get it on its way to Venus. With absolutely no problems whatsoever. Uh, even if we can't get our station deployed this window, we're going to get some of the infrastructure in orbit that we need. Uh, one of these resupply modules, this is the life support module get a uh, fuel module out there also and so that when the station arrives and then the window after that when the crew arrives everything can be hunky-dory so anyway I'm gonna get this to orbit and I will see all of you there and thankfully this launch is uh, quite a bit more textbook than our previous attempt uh, hallelujah but like I said this is a copy pasta of the modules we send to Harmonia, so we've flown lots of these. Uh, they work really well. They're actually under tonnage for the uh, B upper stage. It does the transfer work even out to Mars. They, there's a little bit of a Delta V savings going uh, a little bit closer uh, to Venus. So I really wish that I had spent some time thinking about how to approach this problem a little differently rather than just saying, hey, we have this thing, it works, let's use it again. Um, it's been a good long while since we did any aero capture anything at Venus, and it does make me nervous. It has always made me nervous. The, the, the thin red line on how to capture at Venus versus how to deorbit or how to get yourself flung off into space is absolutely tiny. Uh, there's booster set down and away, fairings are off, and you can now see that uh, our supply module. Uh, this is the same supply pod that's keeping a crew of three out at Harmonia Station for like a decade. Uh, so this should be uh, multi-mission ready, uh, keeping them well stocked for several, maybe two 
crew rotations uh, well out into the future. I did make some changes to the B upper stage, but I've done this for uh, a lot of other things uh, in hopes of kind of maximizing its potential, especially in these deep space missions. Uh, we'll get all to that uh, when our core stage burns out. We're just trying to uh, mitigate our relative inclination and time our time to apoapsis uh, with our runtime, hoping that we can circularize this whole thing with out too much issue, but it looks like we're going to be uh, under ton, angled shut down with about a kilometer per second left in that core stage, uh, and we'll open up some tanks. Now as you see here on the bottom of the B upper stage, we do actually have a set of solar panels, uh, and there are some radiators down there too to help keep the liquid hydrogen cryogenic throughout most of its trip. Uh, Maneuver Planner doesn't really want to cooperate with us, but it does give us a pretty good window, uh, 3.9 kilometers per second in 22 hours. So we'll get a good chance to test out the cooling capabilities uh, of this new B upper stage, kind of calling it the BL for long duration. Uh, solar panels out, they are keeping everything charged, radiators are active, MechJev node has been plotted. Uh, now we just have to get ourselves uh, around to this node. So we'll focus on Earth so as to not kill ourselves and then time warp a whole bunch. 47 minutes out, and we'll activate our HG3, make sure that's good, and half of our thruster fuel is gone for whatever reason. Now uh, I wish I had kind of noticed it then, but I did not. The HG3 is not articulating with our input commands. Uh, good solid light on that engine, but it is not gimbling. Uh, gimbal is active, it is unlocked, it is just doing absolutely nothing. Uh, we did recently unlock some upgrades for our HG3 engine, uh, the HG3A HG3A-SL for sea level. Uh, I was hoping to get more into the technical specifications of those later. I don't think this is the cause of the issue. I would like to say it's test flight giving us a gimbal failure, but I don't even really know if that's a thing. Um, but it is becoming increasingly difficult to hold the node, so much so that I reactivated the thrusters uh, on the resupply pod itself to help give us a, a little bit more uh, authority in our maneuvering as far as uh, keeping us on the node, which always a little problematic, but the gimbal is doing absolutely nothing. Um, I don't know if this is just a glitch of me playing KSP for a couple of hours now, or, or if that's actually a thing. I never bothered to actually go test, test flight. We're going to fold in those solar panels because they are clipping into the fairing and that's irritating me. And I'd just uh, rather not have that be a thing. And then uh, up the time warp and see exactly how absolutely horrible we're doing at staying on that uh, maneuver node. I mean, HG3's gimbal range is, I mean, not super, we're not, it's not like 10 degrees or anything, but uh, even 3 or 5 degrees should be more than adequate to hold the spacecraft on course. It's done it a million times in the past. We're just getting absolutely no motion from it this time, which is concerning uh, to a degree, but we're just going to chalk it up to a gimbal failure, another parts failure, and try to carry on with the mission as best we can, although it might uh, screw things up a little bit. Anyway, this was supposed to be a test run uh, to see how much liquid hydrogen we could carry down to Venus with us, and if that uh, HG3 would uh, have enough left in it to provide some of the uh, orbital insertion burn we needed when we got there, which would be awesome, because then we could stop hauling that big stupid heavy heat shield, and that would save us so much delta V, we could actually probably make these resupply containers uh, even larger, which would be great. But on engine shutdown, we have absolutely no encounter with Venus predictable. Uh, the burn was horribly mistimed, and I generally just screwed the whole thing up, and our gimbal's broke. That's what we're blaming it on, gimbal's broke. So we'll set ourselves up a new maneuver node, uh, just a about a minute ahead of us, which is probably our first mistake, uh, but it ends up being rather meaty. I think uh, coming in close to 350 meters per second or so to uh, bring ourselves in on a nice equatorial course. And uh, I don't really want to waste the thruster fuel, nor do I think that we have it to spend. So we're going to have to use our second ignition on this HG3, which does make me very, very sad, considering it's got more than a kilometer per second left in it. We like the engine a little early, 
um, as far as our turn, and then uh, realize, oh yeah, our gimbal's broke. That's going to cause a huge problem. And uh, there, we actually have an encounter with Venus. It's particularly terrible. So we will jettison our still remotely fueled HD3 stage. This makes me very sad. We get our solar panels for our resupply pod out, and uh, we are go for arrow breaking, arrow capture maneuver around Venus. Uh, this does make me nervous, but also glad that there's no crew going out this window, so we have uh, some time in case we really screw this up. Wouldn't shock me much, considering how well this mission is going already. Uh, lots of pulling and tugging at nodes, trying to get that equatorial path that we had last time. I just uh, don't know how well it's going to work out for us. Uh, 34.1 meters per second on this tiny little correction. It says that node happens in about six minutes, but we'll go ahead and light the HA-10-118K uh, right about now. It says it'll only take a minute to do, but I figure earlier is probably better than later. Uh, not the case. I mean, not really. You can see we're, we're still pretty far up there. Uh, we do have unlimited relights on this engine. I'm just uh, not quite sure on what axis to articulate. So I will be doing this with our maneuvering thrusters, uh, holding either I, J, K, L, H, or N intermittently to see which one affects the best change for our predicament. Uh, I would really like this to be an equatorial orbit. I know it's not the greatest for a research station that has biome-dependent experiments on it, but uh, ease of returning the crew is more important than the scientific data they will gather. Uh, we can always get them other experiments or devise ways for them to collect more data from different places without uh, needlessly increasing the crew's um, Delta V budget for coming back home. But our course is dialed in. We will deactivate RCS for the time being and admire one last look at Earth as we uh, get our first part of our Venus orbital project underway. So that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.